Are we still obliged to keep the Old Testament laws? There are religions that forbid the eating of meat such as pork and that teach that the worship of God must not be done on Sunday but on Saturday. But isn't it clearly stated in the Bible that we are not under the law anymore but under grace? Remember, the law and the prophets are until John the Baptist only, and the mediator of the New Testament is our Lord Jesus Christ. So meat or food does not commend us to God. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For meat does not destroy the work of God, for all things indeed are pure. There is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteems anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. And he that doubts is damned if he eat, because he eats not of faith. For whatsoever is not done of faith is sin. Therefore, eating anything considered unclean, like pork, only becomes a sin when it is not eaten by faith. And to be clear, I am not forcing anyone to eat pork. I am only stating what the scriptures say about the topic. And no one can force you to do anything that is against your will. As for the Sabbath, the Sabbath is the day of rest. Every seventh day or Saturday, and the Sabbath keeping is part of the law in the Old Testament. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that Sabbath keeping began with Adam, because it began only after God delivered the Israelites from their bondage in Egypt. In fact, this is what the Lord God said to them. And remember that you were a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out thence through a mighty hand and by stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The Sabbath is a sign between God and the Israelites that they might know that he is the Lord that sanctifies them. Therefore the Sabbath is not the seal of God, because it is clear from scriptures that the Holy Spirit is the seal of God on us until the day of redemption. So let's be careful of religions that teach that the worship of God every Sunday is the mark of the beast, especially when it becomes enacted worldwide as the Sunday Law. Remember, the papacy is just one of the seven heads of the beast from the sea, and if you'll notice, he is not promoting the Sunday Law, but the shots. Because according to the Pope, Taking the shot is a moral and ethical obligation, and that is a act of love or the proof that you love others. This is not the definition of love according to the word of God. So let us be careful, brothers and sisters, because Satan will use all kinds of tricks to deceive all people into receiving the mark of the beast and, if it were possible, even the very elect. The Sunday law has nothing to do with buying or selling, and while waiting for it to be enacted worldwide, you will lose sight that the real mark of the beast is right in front of you. When Jesus said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He is telling everyone that he is the fulfillment of all the laws and prophecies of the Old Testament, but that does not mean that we will not obey God's commandments anymore. But the commandment concerning the Sabbath is not made by God to be a burden for us. He only gave us one day a week to rest. Remember, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So let's keep this holy day and avoid any sinful activity. Let us not be like the Pharisees who are too dogmatic and high-minded because of their obedience to the Old Testament laws, which has even reached the point that they accuse even our Lord Jesus Christ of being a sinner because of the miracles and healings he performed on the Sabbath. And like them, if you think that you can achieve salvation by strict obedience to the Old Testament laws, you are just tiring yourself and ignoring the sacrifice made by our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, salvation is not by your own works, but by the grace of God, through your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Remember, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath, and only in him can we find rest. And he himself taught us that the greatest commandment in the law is this, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Therefore, let us love one another and don't judge each other with regards to meat or in drink or in respect of any holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Christ has made us free. So let us stand fast, therefore, in the liberty and not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 
And now that we know God, or rather are known of God, why would you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements? Do you desire again to be in bondage? Let us not be like the Jews who are still in bondage to the law up to this day, because they did not accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Their minds were blinded, for until this day remains the veil of Moses, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Remember, we worship God in spirit and in truth, so there is nothing wrong with worshiping God every Sunday because God knows if he is the one you are worshiping, or if you're worshiping the pagan sun god. In fact, the early Christians met every Sunday in honor of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on the first day of the week.